previously on episode two. In this three-part series, we are taking a seven-day, six-night trip from Tokyo to Kyoto, but not by the usual route along the Pacific coast known as the Golden Route, which most tourists take. Instead, we are traveling through Japan's new Golden Route, which delves into the country's rural interior, continues along the beautiful Sea of Japan coast, and finishes in Kyoto. A great way to travel along this new Golden Route is using the Hokuriku Arch Pass, a seven-day pass exclusively available to overseas tourists that allows for unlimited use of all the JR lines shown on this map, including the Hokuriku Shinkansen. In episode one, we made our way from Tokyo to the Snow Monkeys, before episode two saw us traveling along the Sea of Japan coast, through the Kurobe Gorge, and to the mountain town of Takayama. Now, in this third and final episode, we spend the last three days exploring an historic city, beautiful countryside spots, and an old merchant town before reaching our final destination, Kyoto. So join me, Sam Evans, as we travel from Tokyo to Kyoto along Japan's new golden route. Day 5 Here's the plan. We wake up in Takayama, where we will spend the morning at one of its popular morning markets. We then head to Kanazawa, where we'll have a lunch and visit the famous Kenrokuen Garden, before staying the night at a traditional Japanese ryokan. So we've arrived this morning at one of Takayama's two morning markets. Now these morning markets that are open daily sell a selection of crafts, local vegetables and street food. I'm starving, so let's go and get breakfast. to Toyama via the Takayama line before taking the Hokuriku Shinkansen to Kanazawa. From Kanazawa station, we make the 15 minute walk to Omicho Market. So we've just arrived in Kanazawa and first of all, we're gonna get some local cuisine for lunch. And following that, we're gonna take a trip to Kenrokuen, one of the three most beautiful gardens in all of Japan. Let's go. Two of the things that Kanazawa is most famous for are its incredible seafood and gold leaf. Now this restaurant that we're in today in Omicho Market combines the two and it looks absolutely delicious. We're here at Kenrokuen a garden that was made for the enjoyment of the local lord, who in the feudal era was the second richest in all of Japan after the shogun. Today, this garden is open to the public and stands as Kanazawa's number one tourist attraction. Following our exploration of Kenrokuen, we make the short walk to our accommodation for the night. Currently enjoying a coarse dinner of Kanazawa Oat Cuisine accompanied by some delicious local sake. Now after this it's off to bed because we've got a big day tomorrow. Kanpai. Day 6 we leave Kanazawa behind and head on to Fukui Prefecture, where we'll partake in a kimono wearing experience and visit Maruoka Castle. After a morning of kimono fun, we head to the Hakusan Heisenji Shrine before making our way to Shiga Prefecture and the town of Omihachiman, where our day will come to an end. We take the Hokuriku mainline from Kanazawa to Awara Onsen Station before taking a bus to Maruoka Castle where we will make the short walk to the kimono rental shop.
have arrived at Maruoka Castle, one of only 12 in Japan whose keep has survived since the feudal era. From Maruoka Castle we take a bus to Eiheiji Guchi Station and then board a train all the way to Katsuyama Station, from where a taxi will take us to the Hakusan Heisenji Shrine. We've just arrived at Hakusan Heisenji Shrine. And this place is well known for the moss, which as you can see, covers a lot of the shrine grounds. Now the atmosphere in this place is just absolutely serene. Let's go and check it out. To end our day of exploration, we take a train back through the countryside from Katsuyama to Fukui, where we board a limited express train to Maibara before heading on to Omihachiman via a special rapid train. The Ryokan we will be staying at is around 30 minutes walk from the station or around 10 minutes by taxi. So we've made it to the end of day six of this incredible journey from Tokyo to Kyoto. And tomorrow we've got yet another amazing day planned. But I think for now, it's time for a little bit of relaxation before getting a good night's sleep. Day seven. For the last day of our trip, we start with a boat ride along the Omihachiman Canal, after which we'll explore the old merchant district and indulge in a local delicacy for lunch. Following that, it's off to the final stop of our journey, Kyoto's Fushimi Inari Shrine. So the canal that we're sailing on this morning was made by the local lords some centuries ago and later it contributed heavily to Omihachiman's ascendancy as a commercial hub. Only a few minutes away from where the boat ride docks is Shinmachi Dori Street, along which many historic buildings have been well preserved. So we're here at a restaurant inside the old merchant district, and this restaurant specializes in omi beef, the local delicacy. Today we're going to eat it sukiyaki style and the way you do that is by cooking the beef in this broth before having it with a little bit of raw egg. It looks delicious and I cannot wait to dig in. Back at Omihachiman station we take a 35 minute train ride to Kyoto where we take the Nara line a couple of stops to Inari station. So we finally made it to our last destination on this seven day tour from Tokyo to Kyoto. And what better way to end a trip like this than at Kyoto's fantastic Fushimi Inari Shrine. And that concludes our amazing adventure along Japan's new golden route. If you are looking for more information about this itinerary, click the links on the screen now, or head over to japanguide.com, your comprehensive up-to-date travel guide first hand from Japan. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell for more videos about Japan. Happy travels.